name is Morgan, and I'm studying ecology and evolutionary biology. Um, has nothing to do with what I'm talking about, but still what I really want to talk about. Sure. Um, okay, so the title of this event is called The Exposure Series, which made me think, when most people hear the word exposure, it doesn't mean anything. It's just a neutral, natural word. But when I hear the word exposure, I think of very intense anxiety and fear and disastrous consequences. So why on earth is that, that what was once a natural word makes me think of fear? And so the answer to that is um, I have obsessive compulsive disorder, otherwise known as OCD, and exposures are the name of the main treatment that's used. Um, I do want to note before I continue, I'm not a professional and I'm not speaking as one. This is based purely on my experiences over the past decade or so. Um, so what is OCD? Floating around conversations in the internet, you often see pictures like this. They think it means orderly, clean, wanting things in line. So for example, that picture out of line, someone might say, oh, that makes me so OCD. And it's sort of seen as like this fun quirk that everyone has a little of. Um, and that's why I want to talk to you today is because I want to set the record straight. OCD does not mean any of these things. None of those pictures are OCD. Um, in reality, it's a fairly serious mental health condition and when untreated, it can actually become fairly debilitating. Uh, it can get scary and people can lose hours and hours to the rituals that come with it, um, which I'll explain shortly. So what are rituals, you might be thinking. Well, OCD follows this cycle where the person gets this weird, sort of odd, intrusive thought, normally about something bad happening, and so they'll worry about it over and over and over, and since something bad happening, anxiety goes up. And so then they have these things called compulsions, which are a behavior they do, which is sort of associated with it, sometimes not, um, that they use to try to bring down their anxiety, but it's only temporary, so then they have to keep going around and around, and what they're trying to do is reach certainty that this bad thing won't happen, but certainty is impossible, so you have to keep going around and around and around. Um, so one example from my own experience is uh, when I'm setting my alarm clock before bed, I'll get this thought, maybe I said it wrong, now my teacher's gonna be mad if I'm late, and all sorts of disasters are gonna happen. So then I'll keep checking it over and over, I'll reread it, okay, does this really say 9.15 a.m.? Because people with OCD, we often doubt our own memory, as silly as that is. So this takes a really long time, because you just keep going around and around. But besides from taking a really long time, it can also get really dark. So this is an example from when I was a little kid. If I thought about something bad happening to my family, maybe them getting sick or dying. Well, because I thought it, I would think, now it's gonna happen, it's gonna be my fault. So the compulsion was uh, the common superstition, you know, knocking on wood. I'd have to knock on wood over and over and over until it felt safe or until it ended on a good number of knocks. And so it manifests itself in a lot of different ways. It follows general themes. Um, this is only some of them. But another example of mine on here that I'll use to explain exposures is a fear that leaving something plugged in could start a fire. And so then I'd have to go around the whole room and unplug everything before I leave the house just to prevent a fire. So you're probably thinking, do we actually believe this? Do I really think unplugging things is gonna prevent a fire or tapping on wood is gonna keep my family safe? No, of course not. We know it's illogical, which is why it's so frustrating that we can't stop. But often the anxiety is so intense that comes with it that it outweighs the logic and you do the compulsions over and over just in case. But luckily there is help. Um, this is what our exposure, it's called exposure and response prevention. So you purposely with a therapist do what terrifies you um, which raises your anxiety, and then you don't let yourself do the compulsion. You put a break in the cycle, um, so then you're helping to stop it going round and round. And for example, so what I have to do is plug something in and then leave the house. Maybe a fire will start, so it spikes your anxiety really fast. But eventually, your anxiety does come down on its own, and this is why it works, because you didn't do the compulsion and you learn the bad thing really isn't gonna happen. You prove it to yourself, and you show that you don't have to do the compulsion to get your anxiety to come down. But as you can imagine though, this is really, really hard to do exactly what your brain is telling you don't do, that's scary. So what you do is you set up a hierarchy and you do it gradually. Maybe I plug something in and leave for 15 minutes and then I come back and see there wasn't a fire. Then I leave it for 30 and 60 and you do it gradually and you get used to the anxiety at each step and it gets easier. So then you learn that by the end you can do exposures that would have seemed unreachable because you've gotten used to it. And I wanted to include this in case anyone wanted any more information, just because I'm not a professional, you can find more examples or any sort of information you're looking for. Um, so I have two goals that I want to leave you with today. The first is to think twice before using OCD wrong in conversations. It might not seem like a big deal, 
but it really is important because when we use it incorrectly, it trivializes the real condition, stigmatizes mental health, and when there's less awareness, people who actually have OCD, it leads to less people getting the treatment that could help them so much. And so maybe I encourage all of you to now take this information out there and also help spread awareness. You know, maybe you hear your friend using it incorrectly and you politely correct them and share something you've heard today. Because if more people help raise awareness, eventually it can be better understood to not mean quirky or organized. And so the point of me presenting to you today, I'm not asking for sympathy or any way. I'm not saying go donate money. I really just want to help raise awareness and do my part because it's very important to me. And so I want to help start this conversation, but also more generally a conversation about mental health because we really should be able to talk about it the same way that we talk about physical health, you know, with respect and without fear. Um, so then the second goal I have is I encourage all of you to try exposures. You don't have to have OCD to do exposures. Everyone has things that scare them and make them anxious and they avoid. You know, maybe there's that cute guy in your math class you've been wanting to ask out. Or maybe you really want to ride that big roller coaster, but it's scaring you. But it's just uncertainty. Uncertainty is everywhere for everyone. So we all can try facing our fears. So really, I encourage all of you to try daring yourself to take a small step towards facing your fears and do it gradually. You know, maybe ride the small roller coaster. And then you'll get used to it and ride the middle one, and eventually you'll be able to ride the big roller coaster, and it won't even big, be a big deal because you've, it gets easier. You get used to it. And then you'll be so proud of yourself for facing your fears. Um, so in the broadest sense, really exposures are just about gradually facing your fears and living with the uncertainty about what will happen. And so I want to reiterate that it's not about proving to yourself the bad thing won't happen because that's still seeking certainty, which is impossible. Really, it's about showing yourself the bad thing probably isn't going to happen, but you don't know for sure, and that's okay. Thank you.